I'm Sandy Babb. Welcome to my studio and welcome to part three of my craft with me painted birds junk journal. In the first two sessions we built out all of our signatures and so now we are ready for the decoration portion of this. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to make some journal card bases and I've just taken those um, three inch by four and a half by four and three fourths inch pieces of craft card cut them down ink the edges and I'm just gonna make some bases that can be decorated now when you're doing something like this my suggestion is to make several you may only use one in this journal but it beefs up your stash so you go oh I've got a background I can readily decorate this could become uh, a front of a little booklet it could be a flip a side flip a top flip it could be a card within itself, it can be a pocket, it can be a tuck, but you've already got a base built. And if it's a super simple base, then do something, you know, do several of them and, you know, you'll have them ready. So that's the first thing I'm going to make is a couple of these bases so that I've got, you know, some things to, to kind of work with right off. And all I'm using here are the, the pieces of craft card, three inches by four and three quarters, edges inked. I'm using a piece of a child's um, practice writing tablet, a little bit of torn edge book page that was left over from another project, and some scrap lace or trim or ribbon or whatever you want to use for that. And all I'm doing is I'm going to take a ruler, you'll need a ruler and a glue stick, and some other kind of glue to glue the lace because glue stick doesn't work real good on that. And I am stitching the edges, you do not have to do that, but I'm going to on this. So all I'm going to do is take my little, um, I've kind of got one sample prepared here, but I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm just taking the little card, deciding about how much paper I need. I'm going to kind of just rough guess it about right there, and I'm just taking my ruler and ripping it. And I'm going to rip that little side edge off because I want all of it to be, um, if I can get a hold of it, there we go. Rip that little side edge, pull it up along my ruler to get that little jagged edge. And then I'll kind of see about how much I think I need here. Let's look about there's one. And I'm going to um, tear a piece of the book page down. Actually, that one's a little biggish. I'm going to tear it down just a little bit more. It's a little. My hands are getting so awkward. I'm, I keep wondering how much longer I'm going to be able to craft. But. We'll see. We'll see where there's a will, there's a way, right? Okay, that's fine. And then I'm going to get another piece of this book page and just kind of tear it roughly the length of that paper. Um, I'm going to take my ink and ink it. You do not have to ink if you don't want to. And I'm just inking this rough edge here on the bottom of my paper and the little sides because the straight edge is going to be up and you're not going to see it. And I'm just going to ink two, the two side edges and the one across the top just to give a little shading to this. And I'm just going to take my glue stick and glue. I should have grabbed a better glue stick. I actually have some in my drawer over there. This is one I usually just use for tacking things, not really. But I guess since I'm sewing over, it'll probably be okay. Um, I'm just going to glue that down. I'm going to glue down my little piece of little strip of paper with that ruffle side down to kind of give another layer. And then across here, I'm going to pick out a piece of ribbon or trim. Or I've already put a piece of lace on that one. I don't want to use the same thing on all of them. Um, here's a piece of a green ribbon. I think I might do that. I kind of like it even just crinkled up like that. So, get a little pair of scissors. Snip it off like that. And... I'll just run. I'm not going to use that real wet glue because some of this, the glue comes through like that monoglue. I don't think I'll use the wet glue. I think I'll use the tacky. 
for that. And I'm just going to put a little line across there all the way to the edges to kind of catch that just like it is all crinkled up. Just let it crinkle there. And on this one, I may want to just stitch. Let's see if I can catch it where I want to. This one, I may stitch something across there. But that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to make several of these using the same method with the paper and the book page, a little piece of ribbon. I'm just making bases here, okay? And then I'm going to stitch around them on my machine. So I'm going to pause you, make a few of these, and I'll come back after I have them stitched. Okay. I um, glued all my little papers on the back and glued different little ribbons. Um, this is just a piece of uh, seam binding. This is a piece of hand dyed ribbon. It's a pale blue. I'm not sure if that's picking up. It's kind of washing it out. This is a piece of hand painted canvas. This one's a little different. When I got to the end of ripping this back paper, I only had one square left, so I just added another smush of paper on there. This is just a pair of some pale blue lace that I had. This is just some white trim. And then this one's just some cream trim. Now, we're not going to skip to the next step of decorating these yet. And here's why. When I'm doing stuff like this, I like to make, say, four to six of whatever I'm making. I may not use all those in this journal, but this is not wasted time. Some people might say, well, that's wasting time. It's actually not. If you have the supplies out and you go ahead and make a few extra as you're doing this, it doesn't take that long. And then you have a back stash. So um, that's kind of what I'm doing here. And I'm going to skip from this to some tags. Um, I'm using just some standard shipping tags. These are pre-dyed. These have been dyed with coffee. Um, and I've got four of them here because I believe that there are four images in the kit for those medium-sized tags. Let's see. Or you could even use the single bird ones if you want to. I'm just going to use the ones that were in the kit, but first got to find where I clipped them. There they are. Okay. I'm going to use those to do a little background thing. So the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is punch my hole in it. Just using my hole punch. Get the hole punched in there. And then I'm going to pull the string, the pre-dyed string, I'm going to put it back in, but I'm going to pull it out for this part. And I'll have to put it back in because I need the holes to line up on these so that these are on here like this. I want these to be adhered like that. So I'm going to have to take the string out. So I'll put those little cards aside. I'm going to put my string over here so it doesn't get tangled up in the trash. And grab some ink. And these are already pretty rustic looking, but I'll go ahead and do the front side of all of them first. And I won't make a decision on all these right away. I'm just going to, I'm just prepping things for decorating. And this is kind of like, this is, you know, this is a craft with me video. This is actually how I do it. I prep things so that I kind of have things I can just grab as I'm going through. And I don't know if these will end up being tags with just lined paper or plain backs or if these will turn into some booklets or something. I'm not sure. Right around this hole, there's a little bit of a, a white spot where the hole was punched, so I'm just dabbing a little ink on that white-ish looking paper just to get rid of that. Now, um, I'm going to glue these on here, but before I glue them on, I want to decide if I want some fibers or any texture or layers or if I want to leave this plain, if I want to add something like one of the words with some fiber and texture, which is probably what I was thinking about doing. So I may just go ahead and do those all the same. But I am going to line these up where the holes, but I wanted to make sure, did I want some fiber or texture or paper or 
anything else on these before I did that. You know, like if I wanted, um, say, like a piece of the book page. Let me just grab one of these little strips. Like, did I want a piece of the book page coming out the side? You know, just something for added interest. And really, I don't think I do. I think I just want to glue them down and just and add the cheesecloth and little words or something, or even maybe some stitched things here. So I think as far as prepping these, the only thing I'm going to do is ink that front and then glue these on. I think that's the only thing I'm going to do on these right now. And those will be prepped and ready for the next step of use for them. I should have grabbed my good glue. I said I was going to, and I didn't. Line the hole up. And kind of make sure that's on there straight. The only other thing I think I will do is use one of the um, hole reinforcers just because I don't like that bare space there. So let's see, where did I put those? Right here. And these, um, the way that I got these to look like this was I rubbed my ink over the hole reinforcers. Then I took a text stamp and over stamped it to get that look of the, the little worded look. So I'm going to put those on there to kind of add another little layer. And that's going to prep this as far as I need it prepped for right now. So I'm going to finish those other three up really quick and look to see what else I want to prep. I know that there was one thing that I wanted to do a little pocket thing on, so I'll probably go ahead and prep those pockets um, and get those made up. And then, to me, it's easier to have a little stash of stuff over here to the side that I can grab and say, okay, I'm ready to do this and that. And I'm going to try to keep this, most of these embellishments that I can fairly flat because with a ring bound journal, the more you add, it tends to splay at, well, you know, with any junk journal, the more stuff you add, the more it's going to kind of splay out. So I want to kind of be careful about bulking it up too much. Um, so I kind of want to be mindful as I'm going through here how I want to do things. Okay, last one. Okay. You've got a blob of glue on there. I should be doing that on a piece of paper instead of where I'm working, but I'm not. Okay, so we've got those prepped as far as we wanted to. Now, I know on... Let me pick the find the page. There's a couple of these um, <laughs> corner tucks. I'm like, oh, I just lost it. Totally lost my uh, train of thought. There's a couple corner tucks on here, and I want to pick a couple of book pages to use with this. So I'm going to get um, some pieces of an old dictionary from over here. Let's see. Do I have some already torn out? This is a really old dictionary, but has like really super thick, it's like super thick paper. And I don't know because it was torn up when I got it. I don't know. I can't identify it. So I'm going to get a couple pages off of it to use. Let's see. I'll probably need four because I'm going to do two of these. So I'll need about four book pages. And what? else. I kind of want to make this, I, I, you know, I thought about doing it down with a long tuck, but I kind of want to switch them out. Let me find the other one. I've got a blue one. Where's the blue one? The pink one, I mean. Okay, I've got two of these. And so I want to work with these a little bit. This one may go ahead and stay down low. This one I may go ahead and move up. And then there will be a pocket behind it. 
So, what I want to do here is glue my... I like that one with the plant. I don't want to glue on that. Okay. I want to glue my little pocket piece here. I'm going to tear that edge there off. I want to kind of have a little torn, a little bit of that edge torn off right there. That's not so white. You could have just stamped, over stamped over that if you wanted to, but I don't. Now, I know what I want to do, but I don't quite know how to do it, so bear with me for just a second while I think this through. I'm going to tear a little bit of this off to leave an edge. And I'm wondering if this top part needs to have... I need to see how big I need this to be. Let me try to tear this down. That way I can be within my parameters. Actually, I don't need to tear it. I think I'll fold it because I could glue. I know, and y'all are like, what is she doing? Well, I'm not sure I know yet. I'll show you when I get there. <laughs> I know what I want it to look like in my head. I just have to get it on the the thing, the uh, get it here on the paper. Okay, so I'm going to, that's going to need some reinforcement though, because this paper is old. Yeah, we're going to have to have some reinforcement there on that fold, because that's never going to work. It won't be strong enough. And let's go ahead and tear off this other wickety edge here. This straight white piece. Okay, so I have one book and one book page. And actually, that probably needs to be torn some more. It does. Um, let's see. Let's tear it down a little bit more. I don't know why I didn't look at it to see exactly how much it needs to be torn off. Saved myself a little bit of time there. Okay. So I've got this book page up to here. And I wish that dog would stop barking because it's getting on my nerves. And I'll trim that end because I want this pocket here. So I'll probably tear. Let me fold that. Let me do a little fold thingy. No, that won't work. I was going to try to reinforce that. I may have to just glue two. I think I'm just going to glue two of these together to make it strong enough. Okay. I want that leaf one to stay. Let's see what's on the backs. Okay, I don't care about that one. Okay. New plan. Glue two of these together because I need some strength. going to give me the strength I need. Kind of tear that extra off, even with the other page. Okay. Kind of got that torn. Actually, I think it could tear. Jeez, how much do I need to tear off this? Evidently, quite a bit. I got glue on my fingers. And I can't get that paper to come up. There it goes. Maybe I can keep it going here. Maybe not. Maybe I'm going to have to come back in again. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. Yep. Okay, good enough. Good enough. Does it fit in there? Yes. That's what I want it to fit in there. Then I'm going to put this piece on here. I'm going to trim this down a little bit where I'm kind of taking it off the end a little bit. I'll hit it with a little bit of, see if I took it down enough, because I don't want it to stick off the end there. No, I'll take it down a little bit more. Just going to kind of take that down, kind of 
curvy cut it. Whoops. Oh, wrong thing. Oh my gosh. Let's ink with our glue, why don't we? And I think about right there is good. Okay. I've got two of these dictionary pages together. I'm going to ink this little roughy edge here. And ink this roughy edge. I'm not worrying about the other two because I'm not going to be using them right at this moment. Now, I'm going to figure out where I want this to land as my pocket at the top or my tuck at the top. About right there. I'm going to go ahead and glue this whole thing down. I I may have to call it a day after this. This is turning into a little bit of a disaster. Okay, line it up on one of those words. There we go. There we go, there we go, I made it. Okay, I did it. Now I'm gonna carefully go along here and tear some of this away. I wanna try to leave a little bit of that paper showing. I don't wanna tear all of it away. To leave myself a little raggedy edge there and I want to get the not glue stick but the I'm gonna tear this let's see tear this down just a little bit through here I'm not in too far not in too far I'll probably end up brushing this little edge with some extra matte medium or something because this paper is kind of old and it's kind of delicate but I wanted that kind of rough look to it so I like that that gives it some stability for tucking things behind in it I don't want that one little thing there okay that is pretty much how I want that then I'm going to fold some of this up And I want to add a little pocket area on this bottom. And I liked this little plant here. So I think I could fold it somewhere right through here and get enough for my pocket. Ruler. I'm going to tear off that little white edge again. Let's see if I can tear it out. And I'm going to want to put this and this, and I want to tear it to about right there, maybe. didn't tear off. That's okay. I may bring it up a little bit. Tear a little bit more off that. And these are not, I don't really have exact measurements. I'm just kind of doing this to fit my page. I'll give you some measurements once I get there, get that far. And I want to tear it off about here. I'm just kind of eyeballing here. There we go. Now I'm going to open this up and glue it together where I've, um, to give it a little bit more stability. And this one, I am going to go ahead and ink all of it all the way around the edges. Okay. And I'm 
going to give it a little trim down here. I don't want all of this on here. I'm going to trim it in a little bit like this on both sides. And I'm going to trim it down on the bottom. Okay. I'm going to glue this one to this one. And then I'm going to stitch. And I may want to, before I do that, I don't like this straight line here. I may want to add a piece of the torn dictionary page across there and ink it just because I don't like the that really straight line right there where there's a break between these two. So I think I'll ink these little edges up and add another little piece of paper there. You could have put a piece of lace, you could put anything you wanted to there, but I just want to, for right now, I think I just want to do that. So it's got a little bit more interest right there on that part. Um, glue. And glue on this little tab down here. And I'm going to hold that up and glue this little piece onto here. Kind of center it on there. Make sure it's even. Okay. And then this will be a top tuck. This will be more of a little, you know, a little smaller tuck here that's in here. And so I'm going to have two different pieces. This is just going to be a larger tuck. The, you know, this graphic part doesn't come down on here, but what I'm thinking I might do is once it's on the page, and I'm going to do some stitching. But I'm going to leave this loose until I decide exactly what I want to do. But I do have my pocket form. And I don't know if I'm going to have this be a real deep tuck or if I'm going to end up gluing across here and having this, you know, this could end up being a pocket. I might end up having it be a fold down with a piece of paper inside of it. I'm totally not sure. But I do know that I want one of these in here. So I've now done that and I, I said I would give you some measurements on that. This is about four and three quarters approximately because it's kind of rippy. Four and three quarters and then on the longest side it is seven and on the shortest side it's four. So if that helps you any. Um, you know, you're, and all I did, you saw, I didn't measure. I just kind of laid and tore, and there may be, I may want to put something here. I, you know, I'm just not sure. So I have that one tuck made that I know I want to do with that one. With this one, um, it's getting a little crowded. I may have to stop and tidy. With this one, I wanted to at least get a couple of these back pieces done. I'm not sure how long this video has gone. With this one, I may just end up going with the traditional tuck like this, and I may do something at the bottom. So I don't think I'm going to do anything with that one. Um, let me pause you and tidy, see how long this video has been running, and see what we need to do next. Alright, let's see if we can move through these next ones just a little bit quicker. With this one, I'm just going to fold this paper in half and glue it together. Just another piece of that dictionary page. Okay. And I'm going to glue this to that. Okay. And I 
I'm just going to tear it off. Right, it's going to kind of tear right up against that. I'm not worried about if it's neat or not neat or whatever. It's just going to tear kind of right up against that to get those two extra pieces off. This one I'm going to be a little bit more careful and leave that little edge because this one's just going to be a tuck. It's not going to have the pockety, flippy, whatever thing. So, I'm just going to kind of go down the edge. And I don't need to cut it off or anything. It's fine. Just like it's... Okay, excuse me. Um, then I'm going to take the ink and ink it. And in fact, I don't even know if I want it that jaggedy on the bottom. I'll just cut that. I think I'll just leave this one kind of tidy on the sides and a little bit more jagged at the top. Go ahead and ink all that. Where I've got another tuck spot ready. This one's, can you hear my hear my neighbor's peacocks? They're, they stay at my house a lot. <laughs> And they're being very vocal today. Okay, so see, that one was really easy. Um, these two, I have pulled some. Um, this is a shorthand and alphabet speed course. Um, it's a newer sort of work. Well, newer as in people don't really do shorthand much anymore. But um, I did take it in high school, and I still remember some of it. But um, uh, I want to do something with these oval cards with this, but I want to do it on a lighter paper. I don't want to keep using the same paper. I want to kind of vary between um, the tone of the paper. So um, with these, I kind of want to make something stitched, and I'm wondering if I should make like some little pockets with this, or, you know, just by, I was kind of looking at how the this paper is pretty good. I don't think I'm going to need to reinforce it or anything. It's it's pretty, pretty stiff, pretty stout paper. I wish I could get it. I mean, the only way I can do that is if I do it in the middle. I wish I could get more of the writing. You know, I wish I had more of the writing, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. If there were more writing around it. But there's not. So, um, ruler. I'm going to take this one off a little closer to this side so that I have some of that writing over here. I don't mind that it's kind of white in that area. It could always just be on the writing. Let's see if this is wide enough for one. I guess it could just always be un on the writing with a little of the writing showing now. I think it needs a little bit more of an edge than that. And I want the top to be a different paper. So I will get a piece of that dictionary page to tear um, I want a contrasting sort of paper on there. Get another one of those. Get a couple out. I think I want a little bit of a... And I'm just going to tear this right off. I would like a little bit of a... That's two of them together there. I think I'm like a little bit of a, more of a contrast up there with that. And I'm going to fold it over and glue it along that edge. And I'm going to do it to the front and the back because I don't know if this is going to be a freestanding pocket or a, 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 I don't know. I'm just going to make a pocket. And then we'll see what we're going to do with it later. Um, or a little... I guess I'm calling it a pocket, I don't know. Let's kind of line that up. Get this to where it folds over the edge. There we go. Tear that extra off. Tear this little edge off. I'm going to do that in the back too, because that kind of strengthens the top of the paper. 
so we'll kind of just put that down. I hope I'm staying in frame. I forget to look up. I get caught up in what I'm doing here. Okay, so we've got both sides of that on there. Tear that off a little bit. I'm going to maybe darken the ink around this a little bit. And I did almost think about adding another layer behind this. And I think I will. But that's all I need on this one so far. Just open it up, ink it. I'm going to make another one. These are just going to be more like little bags or envelopes or whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to do another one for this other bird. I've got two of those like that. And when I add my bird images, let's see, make sure that I like, yeah, I like these two sides. When I add my bird images, I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to put, oops, some cheesecloth or something under there. Get this open. This is a dumble layer. There we go. A lot of times I'll leave it folded when I dye it, so it's. There's a. <clears throat> Let's just get a couple hunks here. Oops, don't cut the paper. That is not something I wanted to do. I'm not worrying about cutting it neatly or anything like that. I think we'll add a little bit of cheesecloth to this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's allergy season here, too. It's just lovely. <laughs> I'm just going to take some glue and I need to wipe that off. Just use a piece of paper right now. I don't have a wet wipe handy. It's got that little ring of weirdness on it. I'm just going to put some of this right here in the middle on both of these. And kind of lay that cheesecloth on there in the middle because I can trim it down. And then I'll go ahead and Oh, I'm, I was going to do something with this oval, too. Um, I'm going to take this oval. I can go ahead and do that. I was going to use a different glue, but I'll just use this one since I've already started. I wanted to find a piece of paper. Um, not necessarily book paper, but maybe even scrapbook paper or... I'm trying to see what I've got here that's handy. <clears throat> little piece of, uh, I put it on the wrong side, well, a little piece of textured cardstock. <laughs> I guess one will be on this side and one will be on that side. How's that? Because I'm not going to do that over. Okay. Just to give it a <laughs> little bit of something. A little something something. Kind of burnish that down. Um, oh, I didn't stick that. I put the glue on there and didn't stick that in the middle. Let that be sitting there. <clears throat> I'm going to just trim. Oh, don't want to use a deckle scissor. I was trying to think if I wanted that smooth or I think I like that torn look. Let me get those deckle scissors that gives it that look, more of a little raggedy look. I don't think I want it real smooth looking. Just a little. And you could just tear. Um, but I think I want a little bit of a frame around this. So, just kind of cutting that around there. 
do the same with this one. do some ink because it does it may not show up on camera but it does show up a little bit on the edge of here I just want to kind of give it a little and I may even want to do another layer around that I may want to go ahead and do another <clears throat> of the darker dictionary bit page let's see Darker bit page here. That's two of them together. I think I do. I'm going to go ahead and ink around that a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. This one and glue it down. Oh mercy, my gate is not open. There's FedEx. This has been crazy today. I am just gonna. Oh, I'm like, I don't want that on those. Move that up just a little bit. I don't want that on those. My FedEx guy's not gonna be happy with me. Sorry. I'm usually, oh, I'm usually careful to remember when packages are coming. Um, with this one, I think I want to, let me somewhat go ahead and get going in the direction I want to go around here before I start tearing. It'll be easier. If I've got some of the excess off. I can reach it easier. Now, I'm going to tear this in a little circle around that. I'm going to try to just leave, come in and try to just follow my thumb around there. And it's not going to be perfect, a perfect oval or anything. It's going to be kind of choppy looking and, oops, see some of it tore right up against there. I'm going to try to prevent that from happening. Keep it just a little bit away from there. Some of it can go up, but I want it to be kind of irregular not perfect. I think it works better to kind of pinch it like that. Like that. Just kind of um, odd, odd shaped, I guess you could say. Kind of an odd shaped layer. I like lots of layers. So, there we go for one. And I want to do that again for this one come in and do some of the tearing. Okay. This one's got that sort of odd look to it too. If there's any that you don't like, you can get rid of it. And I think because these sides are so, so, that's actually taking up more of the, um, this is so plain right here. I don't know that just stitching is going to make me happy. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of stamping with the script stamp on there and just kind of hit those side pieces so that there's a little more 
interest here. And I'll probably, the whole back, I may just kind of st stamp across the back of it um, a couple of different ways on the back. And I'll do that again on the front where it gets a little bit more interest there. I'm going to open it up to do that back stop. And I don't care if it's upside down, right side up, sideways, whatever. I just want some interest on the back to get that little edge there. Okay, good enough. Good enough. Now I'm going to take these and put some glue on them and put them down on these and these all stitch when I decide exactly what they're going to be. Get some glue on there and circle, 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 circle. Let's kind of spread that cheesecloth out. See, I kind of caught that underneath, didn't I? I spread that out and let some little pieces of that cheesecloth kind of just I'm kind of spreading it out as I'm putting that on there so I get a little bit of that raggedy edged look. Okay. For that one. It's kind of spread out already. Don't think I'll have to do as much with it. And you can still add layers on top of this, but this is going to give us a base for either two. Um, they could be a flip down. You know, it could be attached. You could even just attach it here, like in a U. Have a side pocket. Have a journaling spot there. Um, you know, where it could tie at the top or something or it could just be stitched at the sides and remain a pocket or you know one thing or the other you know this is going to give us our back for that these are going to be our basis for that oh and I just got glue all over that one jeez okay that's those two now let's move along to another one I know what I'm going to do with these <clears throat> These are the belly bands. I'm going to put glue on the back of the belly bands. I'm going to glue them to a dictionary page, trim them, and then glue them to some um, craft card. I'm kind of beefing up the belly band, I guess. So I'm going to put one down like this. And see the other side better that doesn't have these little animals on it. I'm gonna turn this over. And one like this. And the rain is starting to come down in earnest. So hopefully I can get these two done before it really takes off storming. <clears throat> and I'll call it a day after this. Um, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to cut it. I'm going to kind of cut around the same shape as the belly band. It doesn't have to be exact, but I'm just going to kind of cut around a little bit to give a little bit of that shape that's there. And... I'm just kind of, like I said, kind of winging it, you know, not really worrying if it's the exact shape, just kind of, you know, something that gives a rendering of sort of that shape, okay? I'm going to ink that and repeat that cutting process on this one. Now, 
see how fast I can crap when the storm's coming in. Because, man, we had, it, it was bad last night. It was very, very bad. It was, it was quite scary. And we have these towering oak trees. I keep thinking we need to cut these trees down. One of these days we're going to wake up with a tree in our face. It is, they're huge and they're too close to the house. And we keep saying we're going to cut them down and I, I Oh, I just can't bear to cut them down and you know but I guess if I you know think between being squished by a tree and having the tree there maybe you know it's a good option to go ahead and let that go I'm gonna ink down this little edge little edge okay then I'm pretty sure I want to do this on craft card yeah I think I do I'm going to glue these down on craft card and cut them out again and ink them and then that'll be my belly bands have a little um, you know, stuff can be added to them still, but at least this gets the background of them how I want them. So I'm just going to glue them down on this craft card. Same with this one. And then I've got one more background thing I want to build, and then that pretty much will end this session. And in the next one, oops, we can really <clears throat> get into actually putting things in the book but I do I do like I said I find this is my process this may not be your process you know um, I apologize if that's annoying to anyone out there that they want you know completed pieces as they go I like I said I like to build this up and then you know come back and then you know add final decorations because I sometimes don't know until I put it on the page exactly how I want it to look. I might have an idea like I knew what I wanted to do to some of these but I wasn't sure exactly how I want to finish them out. You know so um, that is just going to depend and if things work out I'm hoping I can get the the second or the fourth part of this filmed pretty quickly. Um, I may have to just lay some more things out to see what else I have left to make for this book. But like I said, I like to kind of crank a bunch of this out. I have it by me and that way I can also audition things. You know, when I'm doing a page I can kind of pick it up and go, yeah, you know, that goes here or no. This is better on another page and I kind of have some of my background pieces done. And then I just get to add the little fun bits to it, whether I want to add, you know, lace or flowers or beads or, you know, whatever, whatever it is, okay. And I'm going to ink this, so I've got to kind of, I've kind of beefed up and strengthened that belly band. So this is not, this is, you know, not going to tear so easily putting things in and out of it. And now you can still add to it if you want to, or you can leave it like this. So, got the belly band done, and I'm going to do this one, and I may put a little stitching on this, I'm not sure, we'll see, and um, I'm not going to do that part yet, like I said, I'll do that kind of as I go, if I think I want stitching, if I think I don't, um, but that preps the background for my belly bands. And I want to use an actual file folder. And I'm going to cut this in half. Because there are little tiny file folders in this kit. And I actually want to make them into little tiny file folders. These little folders. These. 
I want to make these into little tiny file folders. You can add paper to them. You can leave them, you know, just as journaling spots or whatever. But I want to go ahead and, and do that. So, what I'm going to do is get my scoreboard here. And, oops. Don't need a cutting mat along with it, just the scoreboard. And you don't need to score this. You can do it, you know, just normal, um, you know, by folding. And I'm going to take part of this folder. These need to be on a fold when I cut them out. So, probably get more out of them going this way. Let's see. I'm going to I'm going to score this. It looks like I can score it at two inches. Maybe I'll go one little line over two inches just to make sure. Maybe I'll go two and a quarter because I'd rather have too much. I think I'll score this down two and a quarter. And <clears throat> fold it. I'm going to cut that away. Now I'll go over to my paper cutter, but it's over on the other desk. And just keep this going. How many can I get on that? One, two. I feel comfortable with three on each one. So, and there's six of them, so I just need two. Let's do two and a quarter. I don't know if that's is that as wide. Yeah, that's gonna work perfect. Just one piece of the actual file folder because I want these to be kind of like actual little file folders. So um, now you can just use cream cardstock for this. I don't happen to have any cream because I, I tend to use it up pretty quick. That's why I'm using the um, actual file folder. And I just did a project with file folder, so I had some left over. So now what I'm going to do is take both of these. And above the fold, I'm going to glue, oh, if I can get a hold of it, my little folders on there, on the fold line. Like this. Whoops. Line it up on that little fold line there. And glue that down really well. And I'm going to leave a little space in between them so I have plenty of room for cutting. Then I don't have to worry about anything. There we go. A little fold line there. I guess the other thing I didn't do was to prep my tabs, but I think I'll just do those as we go along. Am I getting out of frame? I'm moving way, scooting across the table. Okay, I'm going to do that again on these. So I'll have six of these, and I'm actually turning them into teeny tiny file folders. Whoops. There we go. Two more. You can probably hear that rain starting to come down. I'm going to try to get just past this, and then we're going to stop for the day. And then I'll plan the rest of it out and come back. And um, hopefully one, maybe two more, you know, it's four. Hopefully it won't be more than four parts, but it might be five. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Got those all glued on there. Now I'm going to take them and... I'm going to cut them out. And what I'm going to do is hold them folded like this and cut around the little outline of my edges. Very carefully. I 
spin it around to make my little folder. that. And little file folders generally the back um, has the tab on it. You can either leave that tab or cut it off flat. But these are going to be on the front because if not then you lose all the decorative part. You see what I'm saying? So you can either leave it like that or you can cut this piece off. I think I'll leave it for now and once I get each one of them done, I will open it up and do my little inking process on both sides of the edges. All these little edges here. Flip it over. Ink it on the inside. And I don't know if these are going to become journaling cards. I'm not sure what they're going to be. I just know I do want them to be little folders. The little actual file folders. So I'm going to do that with the rest of these that are left. I'm going to stop the camera because it's just repetitive and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, got all these little cute file folders. They are so cute. I mean, no kidding, they are really cute. I okay, what have we got left? Okay, we have these two little pockets, an envelope. We've got some tickets. I'm not ready to do anything to the tickets yet. We still have the bird images, which these I'm not doing anything with yet. And we still have some of the vintage images, and I'm not going to do anything with those yet. So I guess we could finish up by just folding our envelope and getting it ready to get it all glued glue our pouches together. Um, I'm going to fold these before I glue them because I want to see if there's any stitching or anything I want to do before they're um, sewn. I mean uh, sewn before they're glued. Sheesh. I can't even talk, can I? Okay. Trying to get everything folded correctly. That's sweet. That's a sweet little envelope. And I don't know if it's going to need any. I don't think I need any stitching on this. And I really don't think I need any on that either. I think I'm going to go ahead and seal these. Um, I'm debating on whether to cut these. These two I'm going to go ahead and seal. They're, they're ready. They're ready to seal. Um, I'm just going to put a little glue on those two little folded edges and glue those together. And I'll ink along those. And this one, I do think it needs a lining. So I think it'll probably get glued to something first. Probably, let's see what I've got nearby that's um, kind of probably just like a dictionary page or something because I don't like that white in there. So I think I'll glue this whole thing down and then cut it back out so it's got a lining. And then this just needs a little bit more ink and it's ready to decorate. These are. These are just ready to go. Let's get just one more, finish up this envelope. And that's really all the background prep I'm going to do at the moment. So let me grab another dictionary page. Now I'm just using it because it's handy and I don't have to dig, you know. Ooh, that's cute. I'm going to leave that for, I'm doing a farm journal. I need to keep that page right there. You put that aside so I don't use it. Okay. I'm seeing what's on the inside. I want it, I think I want it glued that way. Okay. Let's just glue this one down and then cut it out. 
This will give it a little more stability. I'm getting gunk in my glue. glue from my table probably needs to be cleaned again. one down. Is that oh, something underneath there? Or so what did I glue in there? And now I will just cut this out again. Just kind of giving it a liner. You know, kind of like an envelope liner. And you don't have to do the whole thing, but I just think it'll um, strengthen this paper because I didn't print any, none of this is printed on con, uh, cardstock. Um, I printed everything on presentation paper. So I didn't, um, usually I kind of look at the kit and decide what things I think are going to need to be heavier or lighter weight. And I kind of didn't do that. So, um, um, you know, where I need to, I'm strengthening because it is just paper. And I forgot the weight of this presentation paper. I'd have to go look. My printer is not in my studio. It's in my house. I don't have a studio big enough for everything like I used to since I downsized. So I have to compromise with some things. Can't have everything out here. Um, it was nice when I did have a larger space and had everything here, but... We kind of needed the space for people um, that I was that I was in in the house, so um, we uh, decided I needed to move out here, and which I love it out here. I love the views. I love all the natural light. Um, it's not that I don't love it. I just was so used to having everything so handy. Okay. And again with that ink, yes ma'am, I will be inking. I got a little bit heavy on this envelope around it. Okay. I think this is going to wind us up for today. I'll review real quick once we get this refolded. And glued and inked completely. And these are going to go under, not over. And I should have inked the back of the envelope in here before I did that. All this won't show, but I'm going to go ahead and ink it just because. I don't know why. <laughs> just because. Okay, okay, now we'll put some glue right down here and right down here to catch that on those flaps. I don't want to glue the envelope together. Get it inked there and there. Get these outer edges since they're folded now. And fold this part down. Since I pre-folded it, it's easier for me to fold it the second time to get it all even. And there. And now we have our little envelope. There. Okay, so we have put together our little pockets. They're ready for decoration. Done our envelope and lined it so it looks all pretty. I'm going to do that. I don't know why I like all of it inked. I just do. Okay. Okay. We've done that. We've done our little file folders and gotten those all prepped and ready to go. Kind of tuck that away. We have done our belly bands and beef those up some and, and giving them some strength for when we um, add them to the page. We have made a couple of, we haven't decided if these are flips or pockets or what they are yet, but we've got them started, so they're ready to finish up. We've done um, 
a single tuck and then we've done a tuck with what's going to be a pocket or a flip down we don't know yet but we've done that prep that we have prepped four tags for um, further decoration and we have prepped six or I did six I don't know how many you did but I did six of the little uh, journal card backgrounds so the next step will be actually starting to apply these things to the journal and doing embellishing <clears throat> So I hope you've enjoyed just doing the background portion, and I hope you'll forgive me for not taking you through the whole thing, but we've still got the bird sheet, the tickets, and the uh, vintage pieces to play with in our next video, along with the final embellishments. Okay? So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you around the studio.